Okay, so let's have a look at 5.4. First of all, it's a bad diagram because it looks like these are two columns sitting next to one another, but they're not. They're individual, col um, same column, but we're applying the load slightly differently. So the first one, we're applying the load bang in the middle, nice and centroid, nice in the neutral axis, and here we're going to off center it. So the first one is just um, using um, Euler's formula. So let's do that. So for part A, I want to look up Euler's formula. Actually, first take into account what we're doing. So I would say for the column. Da, 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 what is from a factor safety to determine the allowable centric load for the column so I would say this looks like a free um, service uh, how long is it going to be Been given the area so it's 2.5 long yeah so am I taking K to be two any reason not to yep that was the correct assumption so we're going to assume that uh, k equals 2 we we'll use that formula there so p critical loading will be pi squared e i over k l squared so we'll do the factor safety in a minute determine the level load okay so first let's find the the critical uh, buckling load because I'm actually going to use that later on so that, that's going to come in handy to work that out first so that's going to be pi squared E is 200 I is well, I'm going to have to be 6 sorry 3 times 10 to the 6 make that into meters to the power of 4 so that would be times 10 to the minus uh, well, I could just make that into the minus 6. Okay, so times 10 to the 6, make it into minus 6. I can always assume there's a multiplied by times 10 to the 6. So that's my i. My 2, uh, my k I'm taking as 2. My length I'm taking as 2.5 squared. So what is that? first so that is 236.87 kilonewtons now I want that because I'm going to use it, I think, for part B. Um, but that is my answer for part A. Do I have the answers for part A?
can't seem to find them. But uh, the force that we're going to be applying, because we're going to use a factor of safety 2, will be half of that. So P allowed will be P critical divided by factor of safety. Glad I've done so well there. So that's one one eight point four four kilonewtons. So that's the answer. Right, now for part B. Assuming that the allowable load found in part A assuming that the allowable load found in part A is applied as shown to this case. So these are the same bars, but we're just applying the load to somewhere slightly different. Um, where we've got 20 millimeters from the geometric axis of the column. Okay. This is a nice square um, column that we're dealing with. Okay. So actually, assuming really we've got a lid on top, also wouldn't be able to apply it. it appears like they were dealing with something a bit hollow. Determine the horizontal deflection of the top of the column and the maximum normal stress in the column. Arnold, 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 you give me answers in inches. What are the answers in SI units? Oh well. Sue me if I get it wrong. Okay. So B uh we are Determine the horizontal deflection of the top of the column and the maximum normal stress. So this is the formula that we thought to work out the maximum deflection. So I've got sec there, so that's 1 over cos. So notice this is why I wanted to keep have my um, oil is buckling force. So I'm going to use that there, so I'll use this one. Uh, I'm going to apply the allowable load so notice P over P C R critical take away one. Notice in actual fact I don't need to put the numbers of the force or the buckling because I can see that one over N equals P allowable P allowed rather divided by P critical and that was a half so the, the number that's going into this into my calculator is going to be half that's kind of simplifies thing I guess the E so the off center is 20 millimeters so I could give the U the answer in, tw in millimeters so I just put 20 there so Obviously, we notice we've got pies here, so if you've got pies, you need to change your mode of your calculator. Shift setup. So we don't want to be in degrees, we want to be in radians. So I press 4, and that appears to have switched me to radians. Can you see that? Shh, little while. 
So I've got open bracket 1 divided by cos pi divided by 2 times by square root 1 over 2 close that bracket take away 1 close that bracket ok so this is the number I then want to scale up my 20 by So that's 25 millimeters. Okay. All right. So that's that done. Determine the horizontal deflection at the top and the maximum normal stress at the column. So we've used that formula. We're now going to use this formula here. So for the maximum stress. use P over A open bracket 1 plus EC over RG square I'm sorry I use um, I use RG here to represent the fact that we're dealing with radius of gyration and not the radius of the column or something like that uh, multiplied by sec so that's 1 over cos and then we've got pi to so we've got the same sort of thing that's going on here. P, P, critical. So the new bits of data that we've got is the E. Well, actually, we're going to use the E this time. We've got the C, which is 50 millimeters, and we've got the radius of gyration, which is 37.5 millimeters. So notice that this term here. I think it's called something special. Is the is we've got millimeters, millimeters divided by millimeters. So uh, I'm going to put this in my calculator, all in terms of millimeters. The P is my allowable force, and what about my cross-sectional area? So cross-sectional area is there. So I'll make sure that changes into SI units. So my allowable force is one one eight. 0.44, and that's going to be in kilonewtons. Divide it by the area, which is 2133. So we've got millimeters to the power 2. So that will be in meters to the power 2, 10 to the minus 6. Yeah. So don't forget to change from... Um, one meter to millimeters is going to be um, <coughs> you, yeah, well we're going in the opposite direction but to go from one meter to millimeters we're obviously times it by a thousand and if you're doing uh, in that in terms of areas make sure you do a thousand times a thousand again so i.e. ten to the six in this, kind of, in this case we're going the opposite direction so ten to the minus six so watch out for that multiplied by so let's open a bracket again so now we're here 1 plus so as I said I'm going to treat all these things in terms of millimeters bit naughty but it would be quicker to put them into my calculator like that the millimeters 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 they all cancel okay so the E is 20 the C is 50 divide it by the 37.5 squared so that's that done times by 1 divided by cos we are in radians that's fine and then I've got pi divided by 2 times by square root of 1 divided by 2 uh, should be that I can just do equal now and not bother about closing brackets yeah there we go so we've got the maximum stress that's allowed of a 144.5 uh, 
five. Uh, this is in killer Pascals, which is hopefully correct. Okay, so that's uh, four point five point four. So just um, actually talk about the terms. So the so in this particular case we've got the square beam, yeah. So this, for example, I imagine to be my neutral axis, and I've uh, applied the load from above. So this is where the P is being applied. So from here to here, that is your E value, and from here to here, because it's been being applied here, I'm therefore expecting it to be buckling, so it's shooting off in that direction, the deflection. So that is the direction then that you measure your C in. You measure your C from your neutral axis to the furthest point in your column where it's heading in the direction where you're expecting it to be buckling. Okay. Alrighty, so um so that hopefully that explains the terms. R is radius of gyration and you find the radius of gyration from I equals the cross-sectional area RG squared so therefore RG equals I over area square root so that hopefully that explains the E, the C and the RG where they all come from <laughs>